it show up? What, what does financial freedom look like? Does it, like how, how does it show up in, in reality? Passive income. Passive income or you know, money in the bank, but really passive income. You know, so you're not always that hamster on the wheel, right? Yeah. Like, and that's what our clients have built for themselves. That's why they all seem cool as a cucumber half the time, especially the ones that you know, have owned for 20, 30 years. You know, where we get to experience all these things with our, the professors of real estate and our clients who are really just our role models and, and learn from them. But they look like they have a pretty good life, right? Yeah. Don't have to wear a suit and tie, don't have to do the whole presentation, but are enjoying income coming in left and right. Uh, and that's, that's truly what we're after. So how, how do we get there? Buy buildings is one of them. But how do we buy buildings? See, I think we all talk a big game. Like we all like say this, like I want to buy buildings. I want to you know, get passive cash flow going back. Um, but some of the times we're not taking enough action to actually earn the amount that we need in order to put away the amount that we need in order to buy the assets that we need to kind of provide for that. So I think the reason why I wanted to kind of have this conversation is just to kind of go through a couple examples again, show you how like even a single, you know, what we consider would, you know, would be a single over time can really do well and to kind of get you excited. Like you do not need to make a million dollars to become very, very, very wealthy long term. You know, when I look at it, it's like every hundred grand that you can like save away and like throw into the oven and let it bake over the course of time, that's gonna show up really, 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 really well. And so the game is not for you, Otis, and you know, your first 18 months, how do I become Sean Riney and you know, make whatever? It's how do I get enough saved so I can, you know, plop that first hundred grand into a into a real estate vehicle, right? But how many of you have actually reverse engineered what it's going to take earnings wise in order to put a hundred grand back in your pocket? Because I got, I got, I'm not going to lie. Like I have a concern that everyone's doing well, and I think the earnings potential over the next three to five years is going to be great for everybody. But my concern is, without the proper education, you're just going to increase your standard of living, and you're just going to spend in parity to what your increased earning potential is, and you're never going to get out of that hamster wheel. That's not what I want from you. I want to just like blow this thing up. I want to put gasoline on it. And I think for everyone in the room, including myself, like the next five years, we have insane earning potential, right? You know, some of you are still in your 20s, but 20s are for learning, 30s are for earning. I'm in my fucking 30s, guys. It's time. Um, so look, like that, that is step one, and, and you gotta really be thinking about that, you know, is, is how, how, how do I, like what are the three parts of capital, right? And that's what the kind of basis of this conversation is gonna be. We have the unbelievable opportunity of, in my opinion, working in the absolute best type of product in the world, and we're located in the best city in the world. This is the greatest business in the world and the greatest city in the world. Like, how fortunate are we? Why is it the greatest city in the world? From a real estate perspective, Dan, why is it the greatest city in the world? Why do, you, why do I think it's the greatest city in the world? Uh, well, New York, you have limited land, limited supply. Right. Right. And other, other, you can always expand in other cities. You can always go outwards. So there, there's limited supply, which means prices will always go up more. Quickly. Right. So the land underneath the buildings in a supply constrained market like San Fran, DC, Boston, New York City, the land underneath these buildings is going up in value even if the buildings are kind of decaying. So over the long arc of time, it's a really risk adjusted way to go about investing. You layer on top of that the whole nature of rent stabilization, which obviously I know it happened recently, but the whole theory behind rent stabilized investing really lends itself to Warren Buffett's kind of concept, right? But don't lose principal. In theory, if you're buying a rent stabilized building with artificially held back rents, rents that are $1,000 where the market price would be $3,500, in theory, that income should never go anywhere but up. Your downside's truly protected. It might take a little while longer, but the land underneath the building half the time is at a higher price per buildable square foot than the existing building would sell for because of these artificially held back rents. So again, over the long arc of justice or equity creation, that's what it's all about. We have this opportunity that we're studying basically what we're going to invest in in the future. And that should be you know, another little thing, even if you don't close that deal or that guy kind of you know, doesn't list with us, if you can learn from him 
Like you guys should be considering yourself as like future fund managers right now. Like that's how you should be approaching your day to day in terms of like reverse engineering every deal that you do, you know, reverse engineering the deals that your clients bought, ask them how they're going to make money, see how a syndicate works and really start getting excited about what that hundred grand, if you can just every year for the next 10 years, at least put a hundred grand to work into something that is going up in value and ideally produces a cash flow back. I'm telling you, it looks really, really good long term. Like Dan knows this stuff. What's the rule of 72? If you make approximately a 10% return every year, uh, it'll take you 7.2 years to double your money. And then you can, you know, 1% a year would be 7.2. You can kind of play around. Um, but it's how long it takes to double your money at what percentage rate you're paying. How to double rule of 72. What this means is, if you divide the, if you divide 72 by whatever rate of return you're expecting out of your investments, it'll give you how many years it's going to take you to double your investment. So 72 divided by a 10% return, it's going to take you 7.2 years. How many people would be happy if every 7.2 years their money doubled? Yeah, me too. But I don't think you're taking the action necessarily that like you're as motivated. If, if, if you if you really put this into practicality and reality, 72 divided by let's say you get a 7% annual, and this is you know over a course of 10 years, right? How much? What is 72 divided by 7%? 10 years basically. Do you think we can find deals that make on average 7% return? Let's just let's just talk about in cash flow. Forget about appreciation and all that jazz. Like, are we selling deals that have a 7% cash in cash? Yeah. yeah right. In the Bronx. Not in the Bronx. I mean, I'm going to show you one right now that, like, we're getting pretty close to there. And that's year one. Riverdale. Riverdale. So, look, that's the rule of 72, right? So, you divide 72 by your rate of return, and that's going to tell you how many years it's going to take you to double your investment. I want to talk about a couple things. So, Basically, this whole conversation, because I want you guys to get jazzed up. I want you to understand that you don't need to make an insane amount of revenue in order to start putting things into a vehicle. And even if you hit singles, I would describe this 7% over 10 years as a single. And we're going to go through an exercise that shows you how a single with a little bit of upside can really magnify returns even more than that. But what I'm concerned about is you're going to start making more money, increase your standard of living, and never get into this game. Because if I had like, understood this game and not had been you know, kind of spending stupid money a little bit in my early 20s. And, I, and I'm still, you know, I was still pretty frugal. I mean, I pay less in rent than some of you in the, in the room. And it's because I understand this shit now. I'm a single guy. I want to put everything I can away because I know what it's going to look like because I've done the math now. And that really excites me. You know, you, you, you know a $25,000, $50,000 check here and there. I'll tell you, it excites me more today than it did two years ago. And I really didn't completely understand all these things. Because now I can see how it's going to multiply really, really quickly, as long as I get it to, to work. So every day, I'm starting out You know, early on. You guys see me send out the emails. Let's try to make earn income. Every night when I get home after the gym or whatever, I'm studying deals. I'm underwriting things that clients are sending me for personal investment or just to, to check on the deal. Like I am always studying because I know I'm going to need to use this, and I want to play around with things. right? So I want to talk about how to, how to the three parts of capital.